This is a book review of The Queen's Gambit. Now, this book has been out for ages. I never heard of it before until, of course, the TV series or on Netflix, the Netflix series. And this is uh, by Walter Tevis. Now, I've heard of him. The Hustler, uh, The Colour of Money, as well as The Man Who Fell to Earth, one of my favourite books. I love that, as well as favourite films. And, well, see, on the front... Lots of chess. So it's clearly, it's a chess story. Though I must admit, some of the symbols, a bit confused by. Also, something like smoking. Didn't really feel that smoking was such a big thing in the book. However, felt clearly for some weird reason, it's stuck on the front. It says, for Beth, there's more at stake than merely winning and losing. Well, not that she's, uh, well, she does obviously. Initially, she loses quite a bit. Obviously, she goes down and has plays chess with the janitor in her orphanage. She's in an orphanage. And they are basically giving tranquilizers all the time. That, of course, clearly has to stop at some point. They decide, obviously, the authorities decide that they can't do that. And, of course, there's a great scene here where, with the tranquilizers, without spoiling it, obviously, if you haven't watched the TV series or anything like that, so there are spoil a little bit of spoilers. It's virtually impossible to talk about a book without mentioning something that happens in it. Now, the scenes do happen sort of matching the TV series. There's some scenes in the TV series I think that work better than the book. And there are scenes in here that work better in the book than in the TV series. It's not at all one or the other. I mean, I love both. This is brilliant. Thoroughly enjoy. I read this in about a day. Just one of those really quick reads. You could just go through. Thoroughly enjoy. Great characters. A lot of people said that uh, Harmon, that they found a really dislikable character. Well, I didn't really find that in this book. I must admit, I didn't find that she was dislikable or likable, particularly. I didn't really come across that. I felt that I knew vast amount about her. She was obsessed, obviously, clearly about chess. She was obviously getting the magazines, getting the books, reading all the, the various... You know, idea about chess. So all the various moves to the bishop, to the thing. Obviously... And there's a lot of things that were in the TV series that was really good. I loved the way the visuals, and it was very much more visual in the TV series. Obviously, a lot more emphasis, the clothes especially, the period, period setting as well. I mean, just loved the period setting and the clothes in the TV series. You didn't really come away from this feeling that you felt this was 1950s, 60s, anything. It could have been any time, actually. It could have as much as obviously some of the characters, what happens to it, some of the characters clearly wouldn't have happened now, but it didn't really, you didn't get the period feel. It was a very matter of fact writing. It was like a lot of information all the way through it, just pages upon pages, but it was well written. I loved it. I mean, it wasn't like it was dull or anything. It moved at a pace. You really could go through it. Fascinating. Obviously there was uh, lovely bits like with the Apple Pie Club, which every, near enough everything in this did sort of happen in the TV series. So if you watch TV series and you're coming to this book, you'll, you'll be familiar with it straight away. But there's some things that are definitely changed, and I think for the better in some ways. And I thought the end was probably mm, interesting, done in a slightly different feel. And I thought with... Jolene as well, the character of Jolene, that was interestingly done. That was slightly different. And actually the orphanage bit as well, at the start, you didn't really feel that it was, felt quite dominant in the TV series. I don't know why, but the TV series, I really felt, and yet in this book, I didn't really feel, nor with Alma Wheatley, and also the father as well, the father figure, there wasn't really any feeling, anything really. There was a briefest to mention, there's brief mentions in here, but less so than the TV series. I mean, TV series did seem to get a little bit of appearance. Likewise, the bit where she's in the shop, she goes to the shop and she has to collect a variety of things. That sequence didn't really feel as strongly done in this as in the, the TV series. But, it, you know, I think TV series, and also, like I said, the visuals. The visuals, because it's the brilliant scenes where she's imagining imagining things that she can see, obviously see in her mind, and she's doing all the various. You didn't re I didn't really come across from this thinking that that was happening as much. There was a bit of that, but it wasn't. Obviously, TV series, far more visual. So it's, um, 
and there were a few scenes. Also, there were some bits with some of the characters were more worked out in the TV series, I think, than uh, than here. There were some that sort of. Now I'm not going to remember all of their names. Like Towns, Towns was a character that I felt had a little bit more of a scene in the uh, TV series than here. Hardly mentioned, really, particularly. And uh, but, oh yeah, there's another one. I was trying to think what Beltic. Another character I didn't really feel as well developed in this as that we got to see on the uh, in the TV series. But that's bye bye. I thought this was just an absolutely brilliant read. You still got that feeling. Came away from this going, wow! I want to go and play chess. I want to go and do, or at least go and do something similar, comparable. Because this this was just how to be. You know, the top really obsessed to make certain you really learn it. And also, at some points where, obviously, things are not going as well. It was just a very enjoyable, enjoyable read all the way through. And, uh, well, I, if I'd come to this first, I'm certain I would have thoroughly enjoyed it first. And I'm certain I would, it would have been great. And, obviously, obviously, I saw the TV series before. And I think, to be honest... I hope they don't do, and I'm certain some people will go, no, because there are a few bits here where you feel that they sort of suggest what could happen in the future. So there could be a second series, but I truly hope there isn't, because I'm not one for wanting, if a series is just perfect, just perfect, seven episodes, just, just rounded, just right, the ending, everything is just right in the story, why ruin it? It's like, oh, you must have another book, Queen's Cabinet Part 2. Why? Because you've got a perfect story. I don't think you need Pride and Prejudice Part 2 kind of thing. No. Obviously, people have done that. And, and of course, you can always add your own story. You can always, what, what you think what happened afterwards. I've, I've never been one for worrying about I think the series, there's a certain point that sometimes the series just tips over too many episodes, and you think, why did they do that? And... Or series that have the same problem where they, they go on to, you know. So I think this was just right, absolutely perfect. I think this will be a book that I will pick up and reread multiple times because it is an absolute superb. And also, it's uh, meant I'm just going to go off and get some more Walter Tevis because absolutely superb writer, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyable. And uh, I found it a pleasure to read from start to finish. So Totally recommended, and likewise, the TV series, which is superb. Thoroughly one of the best series, I think, on Netflix, well, ever. I think it's the best, definite, so far, my favourite on all the Netflix. And I've seen quite a lot of Netflix programmes. Queen's Gambit is definitely in the top two or three. At the moment. So, Queen's Gambit, brilliant, brilliant read.